So the past 48 hours, I have been uh, reading a couple of books, very interesting books. Uh, the authors are very much aware of each other and have some significant disagreement with each other. Uh, the first book is The Obesity Code by Jason Fung. And the second book is um, The Longevity Diet by Walter Longo. There's a lot of science behind the impact of fasting on um, obesity, for sure, obvi maybe obviously, uh, but also aging as well. Um, I'm going to actually do probably a couple of series on the science behind fasting. Um, <clears throat> this article is not exact. I mean, this um, the article I'm going to review today, and perhaps in maybe a small series on this article is uh, not just about fasting, though. It's um, also about time restricted eating. So, <clears throat> in case you haven't heard. The um, Nobel Prize last year was won. Uh, uh, it was given by to a few guys, three guys, Americans that discovered a gene that helps control the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is very important. It's basically a way for our bodies, and it's not just us. It's most animals, um, and a lot of bacteria too. Um, have a circadian rhythm. So at night, we tend to go into more of an anabolic phase, anabolic meaning building up. During the day, we go into more of a catabolic phase, catabolic meaning breaking it back down. Um, <clears throat> so there's some circadian rhythm as well as uh, other uh, uh, between day fast um, considerations that we need to have when we think about fasting. Uh, there is a, a very popular diet these days. One of, one of the early popular diets in intermittent fasting was the 5-2, uh, no, not the 5-2, the, uh, the Fast 5 diet. The author uh, basically said, look, just keep your eating within five hours per day. I've, I've mentioned that in a couple of other videos. May get back to doing something on that a little bit later, but actually I will be doing uh, another one on a separate type, which is a little bit more popular right now. It's that 5-2 intermittent fasting. Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Beyonce, but Beyonce's done a gazillion diets. Um, several other people have used uh, the 5-2. I think most recently in the biggest name, Associated with the 5-2 is Jimmy Kimmel. It's a uh, type, more maybe more of a type of uh, intermittent fasting. I mean, um, uh, fasting mimicking. And here's why: the two days that you're, the two days per week that you're quote fasting, you're really taking your caloric intake down to about uh, 500, so a third to a quarter of what you normally eat. Now, <clears throat> this article there's that I'm going to review today was uh, written by Walter Longo and Sachin Panda. Sachin Panda is, you may have never, may, probably never heard of him. Maybe you have. Because he's developed a name and he's getting, uh, he's got a book out there regarding time-restricted diet or the circadian uh, impacts of dieting. Now the first part of this article is going to go into the science. It's a review article. It'll go into the science of, uh, touch on science of fasting and then intermittent fasting, then fasting mimicking. The latter part of the article will get more into uh, Sachin Panda's part in terms of coordinating fasting with the circadian rhythm. Now, why so much interest in fasting? Because it works. So, <clears throat> I'll start off with, a, uh, with an image here. This is uh, a lab a lab animal, a, a mouse that uh, is going through fast, the fasting mimicking diet. Uh, one of the things that they see is, in the fasting mimicking diet from mice, tends to be similar, except obviously proportion to size, um, to what we have for humans. The, the one that uh, Longo developed, Proline, was developed for humans based, again, proportionally on what he was seeing with lab mice, rats, and uh, other animals, other lab uh, models. 
what they saw was a significant decrease in the liver size during the fasting period. Uh, but then what you began to see was an interesting thing happened. The liver, after they finished uh, the FMD, fasting mimicking diet, the liver grew back to the original size. Um, adult neurogenesis and improved mem memory and actual cognition happened with these, these lab mice. They got a significant improvement in their ability to think their way through mazes. They got a decrease in visceral body fat. Their white cells and immune system improved dramatically over what it was prior to the fasting process. There were stem cell, uh, a stem cell reaction, an improvement in stem cells, which was associated and uh, repeatedly uh, predictable, associated with the fasting activity. Um, they also got elevated bone mineral density and an increased function of the, uh, the bone marrow, which again led to the impact that we saw with improved uh, immune function and um, white cell activity. Now, where did this article come from? It's in Cell Metabolism, um, which is a scientific article. This was uh, in 2016. Again, the authors were Walter Longo and Sachidananda Sachidananda Panda, and he goes by Sachin Panda. It's uh, fasting, circadian rhythms, and time-restricted feeding in a healthy lifespan. So it's worthwhile to go some through some of the uh, details on here, uh, at least in the beginning, to talk about uh, where they're going. Feeding in most animals is confined to a defined period leaving short periods of fasting that coincide with sleep, as I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the circadian rhythm. Fasting enables organism, organisms to enter alternative metabolic phases, which rely less on glucose and more on ketone body uh, carbon sources. Again, we're talking about the uh, anabolic phase. Uh, both intermittent and periodic fasting result in benefits ra ranging from prevention to the enhanced treatment of diseases. Similarly, time-restricted feeding, or TRF, allows the daily fasting um, period to, to be restricted to less than 12 hours. Now, as, as you know, many people are just doing, many of our viewers, for example, are just doing one meal a day, keeping time-restricted feeding to about four hours a day. They go on to say it imparts pleiotropic benefits. Pleiotropic just means multiple types of benefits within multiple organisms. Now they're looking to understand the link be between that and uh, fasting mimicking diets. So we're going to get deeper into this article, but before we do, just a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E uh, started off as an ER doc. Uh, again, people coming into the ER bring a lot of preventable um, heart attack, stroke, death, disease, and disability. I went to get training in um, prevention uh, at Johns Hopkins, did well, ended up running the program, and have spent a career helping mostly large primary care staffs, so staffs up to 800 primary care docs, focus on um, preventing disease as opposed to waiting till it happens and then trying to do something about it. Um, also had my share of patients along the way as well. Now, <clears throat> just a brief reminder, uh, this is uh, a brief um, look at the metabolic pathways that you're diverting when you get, uh, when you're looking at some of the areas of fasting, some of the types of fasting. So this is in a yeast, and <clears throat> I will say one of the major um, disconnects that you have between uh, Jason Fung and Walter Longo is that Fung says he ignores any uh, research that's done outside of humans. I think that's a little bit short-sighted, frankly, because we're talking about some very similar metabolic processes, and what we can learn about the metabolic processes helps us uh, learn what's going on with humans, and it, may, it allows us to go faster in terms of developments of theories, um, looking at different biochemical markers that we can watch. Speaking of biochemical mar markers, you probably remember some of these. Fasting stops, uh, decreases amino acid and glu glu glucose uh, 
pathways, including TOR, um, AMPK, uh, some of these others, and bypasses some of those, um, resulting in some cellular protection and increased longevity. That's even in, in uh, yeast. In mice, uh, same thing. Fasting decreases amino acid and glucose. Constant push and constant push through um, uh, mouse uh, met metabolic pathways, including insulin. Again, also TOR, FOXO, and some of the others. Again, increasing longevity. Now, <clears throat> uh, there are a couple of, in the next part of the article, they talk about a couple of forms of fasting that have already been studied um, in rodents. In, intermittent fasting, uh, and in rodents that refers to a uh, ca low calorie period lasting 24, less than 24 hours, followed by a normal period of one to two days. Uh, periodic fasting, which lasts two days or more and is separated from the next cycle by at least a week. The role of uh, intermittent fasting, or IF, on diseases in rodents is still controversial. They haven't had enough uh, work on that to know for sure. But there's plenty of evidence indicating that uh, every other day fasting extends the lifespan, um, and it's more uh, pronounced than fasting every day uh, for one day every three or four days. Mouse studies uh, using different genetic backgrounds indicated that intermittent fasting can have no effect on mean lifespan and may even reduce lifespan when started at 10 months of age. Now, what does 10 months of age mean? Um, again, if you're trying to extrapolate that to humans, 10 months of age is more of a 20-year-old um, teenager for a mouse. They tend to live two, two and a half years. So when the Intermittent fasting was started at one and a half months. The effect on longevity were minor and not consistent. In rodents, um, intermittent fasting enhanced cognitive performance, improved insulin sensitivity, and reduced blood pressure and heart rate. Periodic and, uh, long, and prolonged fasting has been ex studied extensively in bacteria and worms. Again, we're talking about literature review, science review, and uh, what's known out there now. As we begin to understand what's known out there, we can have a little bit better filter and perspective on the books that we read, like The Longevity Diet and um, The Obesity Code. So <clears throat> they're just beginning to understand and study some of the uh, impact in uh, rodents. Um, they already know a lot about um, these things in bacteria and, um, and uh, microbia, my microbes. Water-only fasting tends to lead to rapid rate weight loss in mice. Um, so that's a problem in terms of being able to do this, do uh, fasting research with mice. So a group called... Uh, led by a fellow named Brandhorst, developed a low-protein, low-sugar, and relatively high-fat uh, content fasting-mimicking diet. It lasted four days and provided between 10 and 50% of the normal calories per day. It achieved uh, significant um, impacts on markers for aging and diseases similar to those caused by water-only fasting lasting two to three days. Um, when mice starting at age 16 months were switched to the four-day fasting mimicking diet twice a month, they lost body weight, particularly visceral fat. And even though they consumed the same amount of calories per month, um, so they were getting positive impact, even though they were eating the same amount overall, just going through these two fasting mimicking phases. Now... <clears throat> Uh, it was not accompanied by a loss of lean body mass. So again, they maintained lean body mass as they did this. Uh, neoplasms is just, again, a fancy word for cancers. Cancers were reduced by approximately 45%. And those that occurred were delayed by four months. So <clears throat> this brings up the whole is uh, issue of uh, juvenology versus gerontology. Juvenology is looking at how we maintain a healthy state 
uh, a young state as opposed to um, starting with an older uh, biological state and trying to hit each one of the diseases that might kill us, like cancers, heart disease, strokes, etc. When you're in your 30s, you don't have that kind of risk for cancers, heart attacks, and strokes. You've got a much better protective system. And that's what, we're, uh, what they're talking about here. Um, the uh, negative um, impacts of aging just were delayed for four months, which is a huge time period if you tend to live two and a half years, like two to two and a half years, 24 to 30 months, like a, like a lab rat or mouse. <clears throat> okay, so they were protecting normal uh, cells and increasing the risk um, of death to cancer cells, which we already know. We already see in humans now uh, with uh, low-carb uh, diets for humans and with uh, different types of fasting diets for humans that are undergoing cancer treatment. Inflammation was reduced by 50%, and after four months of fasting mimicking diet, white blood cells uh, numbers were increased that, and similar to that of a teenage mouse, four months old. So again, we're beginning to see a lot of very interesting information in terms of the biomarkers of youth associated with not only just fasting, uh, intermittent fasting, periodic fasting, and now fasting mimicking diet. Now, in intermittent fasting, speaking of which, it can have an impact on metabolic uh, markers and risk factors of disease, including body fat and blood pressure. Um, overweight subjects who, who consumed 500 calories per day, but a relatively high protein for two days a week for six months. Now, I'm going to go into this article by Halberg um, in a different, I mean, Harvey and Associates, the 2011 article. That was done with about 107 female, overweight females. They saw uh, reduced blood pressure, improved sen insulin sensitivity, and these women just went on the 5-2 diet. I'm going to do it. Uh, the one that was made, the 5-2 diet that was made um, um, famous by Jimmy Kimmel. I think uh, there were some other folks that uh, have used the 5-2 diet as well. But I'll do a separate video on that. Um, anyhow, they saw, so here's the comparison that they saw between uh, relevant clinical trials looking at both chronic calorie restriction, which means caloric restriction in this term, when you're talking about fasting, means decreasing the, um, the calorie component of every meal compared to intermittent fasting, which means decreasing the calorie component of certain meals. So they've compared those. And in this comparison, um, <clears throat> CR, uh, calorie restriction was superior in causing loss of body fat compared to intermittent fasting, but both interventions had similar effect on reduce, reduction of visceral fat. And again, visceral fat is what has been linked to significant increased risk. Um, both of them had a positive impact on insulin and insulin resistance. Now, it was noted that neither had a significant impact on um, glucose levels. So uh, that's important. Uh, we'll talk about that, not, not so much more in this video, um, but in some, some other videos that we'll be doing on fasting. Uh, intermittent fasting has some uh, positive impact on inflammatory diseases. Two months of alternate day fasting resulted in a significant decrease in inflammatory factors in asthmatic patients, and again, uh, we have begun to see those in 5-2 um, um, uh, humans that are undergoing 5-2 uh, diets as well. <clears throat> now, this is, um, we're about halfway through. I'm going to take a break. Um, we'll finish this video here and, and uh, complete part two in the next video. Thank you for, uh, for your attention, those who have made it this far.